Hello and welcome to Chess with Simon. I'm Simon and this, there's Chewy and this is the cat's breakfast, which uh, Chewy will get if this goes successfully. Um, recently I looked at a game by international master Ali Mortazayevi and um, the final position was reminiscent of this game, uh, McDonald versus Labordinay. Labordinay was the first world champion. Well, arguably the first chess world champion. This was um, decided at a match in London, 1834. We're going to look at one of the games from that match. Probably, arguably, the best game from that match. And actually, um, Mortazayevi's game was a King's Indian. And the King's Indian and the Sicilian have so much in common. Fisher played them both. Kasparov played them both. In both cases, we give up the centre. I say we because I played them both. We give up the centre uh, and in compensation get dynamic chances and maybe the chance to take over the centre later in the game. Attack the enemy centre. And that's exactly what we will see in this wonderful game of chess. So, um, Le Bourdonnais is is black. Uh, that's a picture of him. We are twins, separated at birth, except he's better than me at chess. Okay. E4, C5. So, it's the defence. Uh, and White is playing knight f3 and d4, which was debated at those times. I mean, actually, the Grand Prix attack, so 2f4, was another way that people used to handle a Sicilian at that time. But um, MacDonald has played knight f3, d4, which is the kind of long-term main line of the Sicilian. White takes on d4. Black's playing e5, which um, is still played today. Uh, it's a dynamic way for black to play. Um, it's somewhat questionable on positional grounds because white can play knight b5 and then the way I was taught was to play a6, uh, forcing the check here. Black takes, so black gives up the two bishops but then black has queen f6. Nowadays the engines want to play queen e7. After queen f6, white can play queen d1, or I like to play queen c7 on the white side. And basically, black has a fascinating dynamic game, and the d5 break becomes very important in all of that. So that's how um, black players used to play after knight b5. Nowadays, engines want you to play d6. White gets a kind of Maroxy bind, and after these positions, uh, black's fine, black's solid. It's a very different kind of game. But anyway, the point is that uh, white nowadays plays knight b5 and then black has a choice between the kind of dynamic a6 and the more solid d6. But then white took on c6. So to modernise, this move looks a bit odd because when black takes this way, I mean, a, it's opening up uh, lines for the bishop, but b, more importantly, the b-pawn moves towards a c-pawn and um, you're thinking about being able to play d5 quite soon and maybe take over the whole centre. So I think the way white was thinking at this time was just to try to overrun the, the black position. So just to attack, attack. And what black is doing is accumulating kind of positional advantages. So it's an interesting battle between a direct tactical assault by white and kind of a positional game by black. But... Here's the odd thing. I would suggest playing the white side of this because I think this can be quite tricky for black to handle. And white has his own tricks, actually. I think I saw this played against Magnus Carlsen in a blitz game uh, and white took on, on C6 because this is right in Magnus's kind of repertoire. I mean, the Shreshnikov is Magnus's repertoire. So within with knight F6 and uh, knight C3 on the board... And uh, White took on c6, and Magnus was confused by it. And actually, White got a good game. And White can get a good game. And here's how. Bishop c4, knight f6, this is all good. So in this game, White played bishop g5. And I think this is consistent with the principle of just, like, attacking. In other words, um, you know, this just looks like a move that's creating more threats and maybe restricting the idea of d5. Actually, what Morphy played, uh, and actually what the engines want to play, is castle here. By white, so this is a tricky move. Uh, so there's some fascinating tricks in the position. So black may just say, "Well, why can't I just take that pawn on e4?" And there's some similarities here with the with the um, open Spanish. Some some black players might be nervy about this, but actually black might say, "Well, I could play it." And after rookie one, which is the obvious move, which seems to create a threat, uh, 
black has a move that does three jobs at the same time. It defends the knight, it establishes a strong centre, and it attacks the bishop, although you can't take the bishop without losing the knight. Mm. But it looks like it's a really, really good move. The only problem is that there is a tactical refutation, and that is rook takes knight. Uh, and if you just chop the rook off, Bishop takes f7, loses the queen. Uh, if you take the bishop, the queen just drops. If you play king e7, bishop g5 wins the queen. Probably under more attractive circumstances. Anyway, this is just winning for white. So you can't take. Actually, black can save the situation by playing queen d6. Because on d6, the queen is defended by the bishop. And it's defending the pawn. You can't play rook d4, pinning the pawn against the queen because then just the thing by the e-pawn so actually black still has a way of getting the piece back but this is quite hairy stuff and so there's potential to confuse your opponent as white if you play this line and just castle here um but this time white didn't castle white played bishop g5 um which you know it's not a bad move the, the basic problem is that swapping the bishop for the knight isn't really a good idea Black put the bishop in the way, bishop e7, breaking the pin. Again, it's very sensible. You see this sort of in the queen's gambit declined, or lots of lines. Um, sometimes in the double e-pawn openings, which this has sort of become, actually. Queen e2 is played by white, knight c3 is better here. So knight c3 is a better way to defend that pawn, uh, defending, developing the knight and defending the pawn. But white defends it with the queen. Um... So now black has got this d5 in, and all of a sudden, just looks like black's better, right? Because uh, this is going to take the centre, perhaps, with uh, tempo. Resemblance to the Karakhan defence, hillbilly attack, is noted. Again, which is not a particularly good opening. P.S. Uh, I've just been watching the computer chess championship online, and um, the computers have been battling it out in the hillbilly, and the hillbilly really isn't good for white. For those that don't know, the hillbilly is e4, c6, bishop c4, and then black's playing d5. A white can play bishop b3, but the computers are preferring to take on d5, which uh, is just a little bit worse for white. So after d5, white's taken here, takes, takes, the bishop backs off, uh, and black castles. So what do we say now? We just say black's better. Black's got the two bishops, black's got the center. White's castling. Uh, this move here is a really good move because it threatens bishop a6, which would skewer the queen against the rook. So white stops that by taking. The point now is that after bishop a6, there's bishop c4. Um, the pawn isn't stopping that anymore. But actually what the engines want is a4, attacking the bishop, then here, then here, attacking the bishop. And lots of good things happen with tempo, or bad things if you're white, good things for black. Black just took back. Uh, the rook steps out of the potential skewer and also attacks the pawn on d5, which moves to a defended square. And then white plays c4. Now, some commentators uh, thought of this as the kind of game-losing move. I don't think it quite is, but it's not a great move. It certainly creates problems for white because now black has a protected central pass pawn. And it's well protected because it's got the bishop protecting it as well. Uh, I think the better move here was knight d2. That's what the engines say. So c4, queen b6, bishop back to c2. This is a very good square uh, looking at h7. And we'll see this comes in handy later, actually. Get the bishop on a nice diagonal. Again, looking at g2, which also comes in handy. Knight d2. So question here is, can the queen take on b2? It can. Is it a good move? No, it's not. Because white has the move queen d3. Again, achieving two stroke three things. So it's threatening checkmate on h7. It's defending the bishop on c2. It's creating a threat of rook b1, which would then kind of skewer the queen against the um, bishop. It's also stopping the queen going to a3. Queen d3 is such a good move. So in this situation, black can play g6 to stop the mate. Then this looks like an absolute crisis because the queen is pretty trapped. It can go to c3, I suppose, and not be lost but then the bishop's dropping on b7. So black has to resort to this, e4, to try to get out of jail. Just about works. Knight takes, bishop takes. So now um, 
black's given up a pawn but black got a pawn materials equal and then after takes here takes here takes here um we are we are equal actually i was wrong when the bishop took here material wasn't equal black's got an extra bishop which black gives up at the end of the combination so when the combination is complete it's basically equal so e4 is the get out of jail card and once we realize that here to stop the checkmate we can play e4 earlier uh, and black gets a slightly better version knight takes bishop takes and now you have to play g6 to stop the checkmate but now uh, black's not under too much pressure but it's kind of very equal the engines think it's 0, 0.00 so taking on b2 isn't right because black's got a better position and that would basically get us towards a, an equal position black doesn't make that mistake uh, knight e4, bishop runs to d8 actually e7 was slightly better as we'll see why is playing this move with tempo then this queen c6, now d6 looks like a nice square for the knight but not straight away, not because it drops the c5 pawn but because it drops checkmate on g2 that's got to be stopped with f3 now the bishop does go to e7 to cover this, uh, this d6 square where the knight can go Putting the rook opposite the queen is always a decent idea and maybe defending that c pawn. Now white plays f5. Now this uh, sacrifices an exchange. It's a little hard to see how, but it does. Um, but this is a good move. Or certainly taking the exchange doesn't work out for white. So white's got the check here defending a4 when the king moves. White then chooses to, to skewer the queen against the rook. Actually... That knight on e4 that was doomed, better to bring it to d6, give it up, and then skewer the uh, queen against the rook. This stops the queen coming to the king side. It also stops black taking on e4, which gets the black pawns rolling. So actually, knight d6 was a bit better, but really hard to see that. I think white just went ahead and won the exchange. Black's running to h6, uh, which gives black access to the e3 square. And also... Um, after bishop takes on e8 black takes here so black's got some lovely rolling pawns here and the bishop on e8 is still hanging so black's an exchange down let's count the pawns 6 v 6 black's just a straight exchange down with lots of dynamic ideas so this was a way to defend the bishop basically attack black's bishop uh, black ignores all that stuff and just takes on f3 so uh, obvious question now is can white pick up the bishop on b7 this does not work queen check here king in the corner uh, king king f1 is also bad clearly you can just take on g2 black takes on g2 here the rook check uh, king has to go here h1 is obviously losing this is mating, but black even gets an extra pawn in the process of mating, check, and mate. So white can't take that bishop on b7. Uh, rook c2 defends against the immediate mating threat. Black gives the check. Uh, the king goes in the corner. Actually, rook f2 is better here, but self-pinning is always hard uh, to play particularly as after fg the pin can be intensified and you know that g that black g pawn double g pawn is now covering f1 as well so the engines do want to play rook f2 but it's a hard move for a human to play king goes in the corner black takes the bishop uh, away from where it's being attacked and now white moves his bishop uh, away which was also attacked and if black takes on d7, the white pawn is a step closer to queening. The This isn't a terrible threat because black can basically control the d8 square with the bishop and the rook. So it's not a terrible threat. Black's pushing. So clearly um, the obvious threat here is queen e1 check. But there are lots of threats. You know, you can't immediately queen on f1 because it's controlled by two pieces. But there are lots of threats now associated with that pawn on f2. Um... Actually, if white did take, it's a check here, take here, and then it's a check there, is winning. So white can't just um, do nothing or take the bishop. 
White puts a rook in the way, and now Black just gets another pawn rolling with tempo. So just hitting the bishop, hitting the rook. The rook pins the pawn against the queen, and now Black's chosen to exchange. And now another pawn rolls. So White uh, has his own threats. Again, a queen on the eighth rank, defended by a pawn. So you can't take this as Black. Well, you can, but then White takes back. Actually, with either the pawn or the uh, rook, and it's mating. Um, and also, there's a threat from white, which is takes on f8, bishop takes, and then queening uh, on d8. So there's a lot of threats here. Black handles it by bishop d8. Actually, rook d8 works as well. The white queen runs away. Um, and now black's playing the same game, so queen e1. You cannot take that because uh, when the pawn takes, it is mating. White defends it. Um, black Now black defends the queen a second time with a pawn and hits the rook. White um, is looking for, I, I think it's probably literally true to say, cheapos. I mean, the engines now see a forced mate for black. Uh, so obviously, for instance, if black took on c1 with the pawn or the queen, that would be a terrible blunder because now white's taking on f8 with checkmate. I mean, who knows? And in, in a low time control game, why not? Um, you know, when things are really desperate, you play for tricks, right? Black tucks the rook away on g8. This is a, a great defensive structure. The king's completely safe. As long as there's no white knight to arrive on f7, this is a really good defensive structure. The king defending the rook. Everyone's looking after each other. Um, it's all fine. And now White just has to try to contend with the kind of brewing disaster on the on the um, black eighth rank. So White uh, moves the rook away from where it's attacked and again it's um, covering the, the queening square. Black's pushing uh, another pawn and you can see this coming to a crisis very quickly. White plays a move. Actually, you know, there's no really good advice for White here. So White takes the rook, takes, and then pushes. And then this was the final position in which White resigned. It's a wonderful position. So Black's given up the queen, but those three connected pawns on the verge of queening are just too much for anyone to cope with, plus the king trapped in the corner. I mean, there's no really good advice for White. An example variation would be takes, and then you just, you can create a rook here. Rook, rook is plenty. But you know, with all of these three pawns, uh, there's just no way really out of this. Um, I mean, for instance, if you play h4, black just queens a couple of pawns. So I've enjoyed this enormously. The only thing left to do is to offer Chewy the remainder of the cat's breakfast. Um, Chewy! Chewy! Do you want his food? He doesn't want it. He's happily curled up. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you have, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more in the future, if you hit subscribe and the notification bell, we will send you more. Keep well and we will both see you soon.